welcome to the second season of the 24th episode of Renaissance Weekly. So good like you join us. We are your co-anchors. I'm Michael Close. It's Michael Denunzio. Hello, Mike. What do we have on the show today? I'm glad you asked. Today in the show, we have a recipe corner, an animal segment about wolves, and a movie review from, by yours truly. But first, we've got a weather report from Brian Winman, Walter Velador. Walter, what's going with the weather? Thanks, Mike. This week's forecast is Monday rain, high of 69, low of 52. Tuesday, partly cloudy, high of 74, low of 52. Wednesday, showers, high of 66, low of 52. Thursday, showers, high of 65, low of 53. Friday, showers, high of 68, low of 52. Now back to you, Mike. Thank you, Walter. Now here's our animal segment on wolves, brought to you by our resident wolf expert, George DeZazzo. George? Thanks, Mike. Today I'm talking about my favorite animal, the gray wolf. Gray wolves range in color from grizzly gray or black to all white, and is an ancestor of the domestic dog. The gray wolf resembles a German Shepherd or a Malamute. Though they once nearly disappeared from the lower 48 states, today wolves have returned to the Great Lakes, Northern Rockies, and Southern Western United States. Wolves play a key role in keeping ecosystems healthy. They help deer and elk populations in check, which can benefit many other plant and animal species. The carcasses of the prey also help to redistribute nutrients and provide food for other wildlife species, like grizzly bears and, and scavengers. Scientists today are beginning to fulfill the understand the positive ripple effects that the wolves have on ecosystems. The diet of the wolf uh, are large hooved mammals like elk, deer, moose, and caribou, as well as beaver, rabbits, and other small prey. The gray wolf also scavenges and often eat animals that have died due to other causes. The population of the gray wolf uh, estimated to be 7,000 to uh, 11,000 in Alaska, 3,000 to uh, 3,700 in the Great Lakes region, and 16,000, I mean 1,675 in the Northern Rockies. The behavior of the gray wolf, uh, they travel, hunt in packs to seven to eight animals on average, Packs include the mother and father wolves called the alphas, the pups and an and old offspring. The alpha female and male are typically typically the pack leaders the track, that track and hunt prey. They choose dense sites and establish the pack's territory. Great wolves develop strong social bonds with, within their packs. The gray wolf have a complex communication system ranging from barks and whines to growls and howls. And I want you to remember this, wolves, gray wolves do not bark at the moon. They do not howl at the moon, people. Good. Oh boy. They don't actually, uh, uh, they, they are more active at dawn and dusk and they do not howl more than when it's later at night, which occurs more often when the moon is full. The reproduction uh, of the gray wolf occurs once a year late January through March. Pups are born blind and defenseless. The pack cares for the pups until they fully mature about 10 months of age when they can hunt on their own. Once grown, gray wolves may disperse. Disperse, dispersing wolves have been known to travel 50 to 500 miles. The mating season is from January or February. The gestation is 63 days, and the litter size can be four to seven pups. One of the dangers to the gray wolf uh, is is the conflict with people over livestock losses. Uh, while wolf predation on livestock is fairly uncommon, wolves that are uh, expected of preying on livestock are often killed. Sometimes even the entire packs. Where they are not protected by the federal endangered species, the most common cause of death for the wolves is hunting and trapping.
Wolves in the lower 48 states are in danger of losing their protection when they are desperately needed. In need. In 2011, in an, appre in an appreciated move by Congress, gray wolves across much of the northern Rockies were stripped of their protection under the ESA. Since then, thousands of wolves have been killed in their region, and states have established alarmingly aggressive management plans to keep plans for these gray wolves. In the entire history of Endangered Species Act, wolves are the only species to go from protected to hunted in a single day. Wolves in the Great Lakes regions were also delisted in 2011. And that's all I have for about the gray wolves. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to google.com and learn about the gray wolf. Thanks, and back to you, Mike. Thanks, George. Those are the interesting facts. Today is May 22nd, and if you have a birthday today, you celebrate with the likes of, and here we go again with him, like, screwing with me with names I'm never going to be able to pronounce. <sighs> Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, who is serving eight life sentences without the possibility of parole. He turns 75 today. Morrissey, best known as the lead singer of the indie rock group The Smiths, as well as his solo career, he turns 58. He day a uh, he he day a uh, oh he it just sounds like a it looks like a but uh, uh, okay he day a ki uh, uh, he he day a he day a Akiano he day Akiano he day Akiano there you go best known as the creator of the popular animated series Neo Genes Neon. Neon Genesis uh, and whatever the heck Evangelion yeah I'm just gonna say Neon Genesis Turn, turns fifty seven today. Naomi Campbell, British supermodel, turns 47. Max Brooks, best known as the author of the Zombie Survival Guide and World War Z and Oral Her An Early History of Zombie War, turns 45. I have the Zombie Survival Guide. I just uh, misplaced it. I couldn't find it. Good. It was a good movie. Was World War Z? Yeah, said. World War Z was a good movie. Brad Pitt actually did not... I thought it was going to stink because Brad Pitt. I'm really like I Brad Pitt movies. I've only ever seen the South Park episode. The and, it was, it was really done well. I have to give Brad credit, credit, credit on that one. So I would recommend that movie. Um, Jennifer Goodwin, best known as Snow White in the fantasy series Once Upon a Time, as well as Judy Hopps in the Disney animated film Zootopia, turns 39. On a sad note, Gina Goodwin will not be returning to Once Upon a Time on season 7. It has been confirmed, uh, which is sad for the Once Upon a Timers. Um, she, she's fantastic. So isn't, uh, what's her name, Jocelyn Good leaving to uh, Jennifer Moore, uh, the, the girl who plays Emma is leaving, and um, the guy who plays Prince Charming is also leaving. Mm. So, yeah. I'm not watching it anymore. <laughs> Our cute car person's not watching it anymore. Um, I love the show. She also loves the show. But we're sad to see uh, these go. We hope to see what season seven brings us, though. Maggie Q, currently stars as Agent Hannah Wells in the ABC protocol drama Designated Survivor, turns 38. Daniel Bryant. Founder of the Yes Movement, as you just saw, and, rep and re currently retired, semi-retired pro wrestler, as well as the on-screen general manager of the SmackDown Live brand. Yeah, uh, and he just gave birth to a well. He didn't give birth. His wife <laughs> gave birth to a baby girl recently. Hmm. Uh, her, they named it Birdie. So they almost had the same birthday, or they do have the same birthday? Uh, well, it was a couple days ago. Oh. So a few uh, days before his birthday. Three days before his birthday. So, yep. Congratulations, Daniel Bryan and um, oh, is it Mrs. Bri Bryan? Yeah, Mrs. Bryan, Brie Bella, aka Brie Bella. It's not actually her name, but congratulations. Apollo Ono, Olympic speed skater, turns thirty-five. Julian Edelman, current Patriots wide receiver, turns thirty-one. Etch Ketchum turns ten once again, folks. He's been turning ten for at least twenty-five. Since uh, nineteen ninety-eight. Yeah. So, 30 years, 30 years, no, 20 years. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, so, in Japan, it was a year. Yeah, so, yeah. Happy birthday, Ash. Catch them all. <laughs> we're getting sick of you. Okay. Yeah, become that Pokemon master already. Yeah. Win, win one of them tournaments uh, some t sometime. 20 okay. years later, and he still had not win a tournament. Psh. He needs to evolve Pikachu. No. Well, I mean, he just keeps losing, so he just... <laughs> it's not Pikachu's fault. <laughs> all right. 
Harvey Milk, the first openly gay person to be elected in public office in California, who died in 1978, would have been 87. Um, there's also a film about him. Called um, Milk. Mil how, yeah, Milk. Uh, Sean Penn, I think? Yeah. Sean Penn, yeah. Sean Penn. That was fantastic. Sean Penn did a great job on that. And finally, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, author of the Sherlock Holmes novi novels and many, many, many other novels that... If I list them all, there be, hmm. you know, just some other no. I, th I think he did The Lost World mm -hmm. as well, um, and a few other fantastic novels. He died in 1930, and he would be 158 today, folks. Well, I didn't, wow, I did not know some of those people had birthdays today. Me neither, but speaking of Harvey Milk and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, here are two of our re failed reporters with information about Harvey Milk Day and Sherlock Holmes Day, which happens to be the same day. Coincidence? I think not. On Harvey Milk Day, people celebrate the life and achievements of Harvey Milk, a gay rights activist who was the first openly gay politician to be elected to public office in California. Tragically, Harvey Milk served as city supervisor in San Francisco for only a little less than a year before he was murdered by Dan White, a rival politician. During his time in office, he was responsible for championing a civil rights bill that outlawed discrimination based on sexual orientation. Harvey Milk led an unremar unremarkable life until he found his calling as a leader of the, of the gay rights movement in the famous Castro District of San Francisco. He was naturally charismatic and deeply concerned with social issues. His successful campaign was a landmark in American political history. In California, Harvey Milk Day is recognized by the state's government as a day of special significance for public schools. The day was established by the California legislature and signed into law by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger in 2009. After a series of petitions led by gay rights activist Darren Bell and in the wake of the award-winning feature film Milk, Retracing Milk's Life. On Harvey Milk Day, people around the world celebrate the achievements of the international gay rights movement and reflect on the work that still remains to be done. And back to you, Mike. Good evening, everybody. World-renowned detective, most portrayed character in history, icon. Who are we speaking of? Why, Sherlock Holmes, of course. Any self-respecting amateur detective would have guessed that. The ultimate detective archetype, the character of Sherlock Holmes, has been a hero to millions since his creation well over a century ago. So can all, so, so can all agree he more than deserves his own day? Of course, elementary, my dear Watson. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of the Sherlock Holmes stories, says the character was originally inspired by Joseph Bell a surgeon at the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh for whom Doyle had worked as an assistant. Like Holmes, Bell was famous for his ability to draw broad conclusions from minute observations. Francis Tanky Smith, a policeman and a master of disguise who was Leicester's first private detective, is also thought to have influenced the character. Doyle's first Sherlock Holmes story first appeared in print in 1887 and continued to be published for the next 40 years until shortly before the author's death. During this time, the detective had countless adventures, usually accompanied by his loyal friend and assistant, Dr. Watson. Sherlock Holmes, was, Sherlock Holmes Day was first created in 2013 as a mini-event by Gala Online, a forum and games site. With there being so many different versions of the iconic character, the ways of celebrating this day are virtually unlimited. If you enjoy reading and somehow never have read these wonderful stories, it is high time you did. The weather in May in most parts of the world is quite nice, so an afternoon lounging lazily in the shade of a tree and getting lost in the world created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is the one great idea. 
If you've already read them or feel like giving your eyes a bit of a break, how about watching one of the many shows or movies made about Holmes? Regardless of your, your favorite Hollywood celebrities are, you are sure to find someone you love breathing new life into the Sherlock Holmes character. From Sir Ian McClellan to Robert Downey Jr. to Christopher Lee, Benedict Cumberbatch, and dozens of others, there are more than enough versions of Sherlock Holmes to choose from. If you feel like a bit more active, Sherlock Holmes Day might be the perfect day to play a little detective yourself. Do you have a feeling that there might be someone up at work that you've been dying to t find out about, but that none of the managers seem to want to talk too much about? Has someone been stealing your sandwiches from the refrigerator? Or maybe you've been getting some enamored text from an unknown number and would love to know who's sending them. Whatever the little mystery is keeping you up awake at night, let today be the first day you decide to find out what's up. And if you have children, Sherlock Holmes Day is the perfect day to get them interested in a real literary classic that never gets old and maybe get them into reading as a whole in the process. How you end up Sherlock celebrating Sherlock Holmes Day is a mystery to us and one that's up to you to solve. Back to you, Mike. That was some interesting info. Moving on, today is May 22nd, and on this day in history, in 1455, the start of the War of the Roses, at the First Battle of St. Albans, Richard, Duke of York, defeats and captures Henry VI of England. In 1762, the Trevi Fountain in Rome is officially completed and inaugurated by Pope Clemens XIII. I believe my dad visited the Trevi Fountain uh, in his youth. Uh, in 1804, the Lewis and Clark Expedition officially began as the Court of Delivery departed from St. Charles, Missouri. In 1819, the SS Savannah leaves port at Savannah, Georgia, United States, on a voyage to become the first steamship to cross the Atlantic Ocean. 1826, the HMS Beagle departs on its first voyage. Huh. Do you know what the HMS Beagle is, Mike? Snoopy? No. <laughs> it's Darwin. Darwin. Charles Darwin. No. no, no yeah, that no, was his boat. Snoopy. He's a Beagle. Uh, <laughs> that's very true. Uh, in 1849, future U.S. President Abraham Lincoln is issued a patent for an invention to lift boats, making him the only U.S. President to ever hold a patent. Huh. Very good for trivia games, that, that one. Uh, in 1900, the Associated Press is formed in New York City as a non-profit news cooperative. Kind of like us. They're not doing as good as they are, though. Yeah, of course. In uh, 1906, the Wright brothers are granted U.S. patent number 821,393 for their flying machine. In uh, 1942, Mexico enters World War II on the side of the Allies. 1960. See, I feel like that might be a wrong statement because we, we're, we're saying Allies because we're the. <laughs> but we could be. If we we're in Europe right now, we wouldn't be saying Allies, whatever. <laughs> the country that it's we're. It's World War II. The country that we were faced against wouldn't be saying allies, they'd be saying enemies. Yeah, well, they were called something else, weren't they? Uh, enemies. No, <laughs> they the Axis powers. Axis powers. They were the Axis powers. Oh, okay. Axis powers versus allies. Sounds, uh, sounds like a Mortal Kombat game or mm. stuff like that. Why is that? No one's turned that into a game. Yeah. Well, I guess they have. I mean, Call of Duty and all them. Yeah. Alright, uh, in 1961, uh, the first revolving restaurant, Top of the Needle, in Seattle, opens. In 1963, Mickey Mantle hits a ball off a of Yankee Stadium's facade. That must have been something to see. Yeah, back then. In 1965, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious hits number 66, while the Beatles' Tickets to Ride go single goes number one. Fantastic. In 1973, U.S. President Richard Nixon confesses his role in the Watergate cover-up. I don't think they heard you. No, because I don't think they did that. I'm possibly denying it right now. <laughs> uh, 1985, A Veto Kill, the 14th James Bond film, the last to star Roger Moore, also starring Grace Jones and Christopher Walken, premieres in San Francisco. In 1990, the final episode of Newhart airs. In 1992, Johnny Carson's final appearance as host of The Tonight Show. 
In 1995, Laverne and Shirley's 20th anniversary reunion special is televised. In 1998, a U.S. federal judge rules that U.S. Secret Service agents can be compelled to testify before a grand jury concerning the Lewinsky scandal involving President Bill Clinton. 2002, uh, Mike Babcock is named head coach of the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Did you just put that there because of Babcock? Okay. 2010, Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus remains are reburied in Frombork Cathedral, Poland, after a 200-year search for his tomb. Hmm. In 2012, Tokyo Skytree opens to the public. It is the tallest tower in the world at 634 meters and the second tallest man-made structure on Earth after the Burj Khalifa, um, which is uh, in the United Arab Emirates, I believe, and it stands at 829.8 meters tall. 2015. The Republic of Ireland becomes the first nation in the world to legalize gay marriage in a public referendum by popular vote. And finally, last year, in 2016, U.S. President Barack Obama arrives in Vietnam for a three-day tour. That's right, three-day tour. Want to hear my impression of Bill Clinton? I did not sleep with that intern. We didn't accuse you of sleeping with an intern, Mr. President. In fact, I was up all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Anyways, I was not aware of those days in history, Mike. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, Mike, here at the Renaissance Club, we do a lot of work. We also combine work of pleasure, which is where our social events come into play. Last week, we had our second softball practice, played Heads Up and Bingo. Now let's take a look at my room review of King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Hello, uh, this is uh, my movie review of King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, directed by Guy Ritchie. Uh, the film begins with Uther Pendragon, played by Eric Bana, who you may know as the first theatrical portrayer of the Hulk, who stops an invasion uh, by Mordred, uh, the warlock, uh, using his magic sword, Excalibur. Uh, Excalibur. Uh, in steps the treacherous brother of the king, Vortigand, portrayed by Jude Law, Jude Law, um, who enters an evil pact to gain the power to overthrow his brother. Meanwhile, Uther's younger son, young son, escapes by boat and is raised in a brothel to become the star uh, of the film Arthur, played by Charlie Hunnam, who last starred in Pacific Rim, and I hear was also a uh, star of Sons of Anarchy. Um, we quickly see young Arthur grow up into a very strong and rugged Hunnam, who is soon forced to participate in a ritual of attempting to pull the sword from the stone. There he is, about to pull the sword. So, oh, uh, wrong sword of the stone. Uh, there, he's pulling the sword. There he is. <laughs> um, so when Arthur unexpectedly, well, unexpected to anybody but the audience, uh, pulls a sword, he suddenly faints and is thrown in prison. Uh, soon after, Vortigan attempts to hold a public execution, but of course Arthur is rescued. Who'd have guessed, right? Uh, after this point is where I felt the movie actually started to get good. Uh, we see Arthur learn to control the magic of Excalibur, grow his team, which includes Jimon Hansu as Sir Bedivere. Uh, you can see him up there. Uh, which was quite an interesting uh, casting choice, and I applaud the, uh, them for it. Uh, as well as the rather strange choice of Tom Wu as Sir George. Yeah, I don't recall there being any knight at uh, the round table named George. Uh, yeah. Uh, other members were Percival, Rubio, and Trigger, who apparently was played by David Beckham. Uh, dead, I didn't recognize as I'm not into sports alone, soccer. Um, so in the end, uh, the film had a rather rough start, which I'll admit... Uh, it would be hard to fix. It's the same sort of problem with retelling other famous characters' origins. Uh, we know they're going to ascend, ascend to greatness. They just had to find that out for themselves. I thought all the actors uh, did well with the parts and scenes they had. I just felt the direction and style choices were a bit odd in parts. Uh, special effects of the film were rather impressive for the few moments that throughout that we get them. Though I definitely think we could have had more battles, more fights, be they sword or magic based. Uh, I went to this movie with low expectations, and I'd say they were met. Um, although, uh, I, I did rather think uh, that Merlin was going to be in it, you know, being that it was about King Arthur and the, and the sword. You know, the Disney movie was all about Arthur and Merlin, so... 
fact that he was in it was a bit odd to me. But there, you know, there was magic in it, and it was pretty cool when we got it. Um, yeah, some some really cool magic stuff going on in the movie. Some really nice special effects. I give this movie a Patsy out of the Knights of the Round Table. Uh, if you really like this sort of movie, you may enjoy it. But otherwise, I suggest you not go to Camelot. It is a silly place. I do recommend, however, if you haven't seen it, to watch Monty Python The Holy Grail. Best King Arthur movie, in my opinion. Now back to the studio. Thanks for spoiling it for me, Mike, because I was actually interested in seeing that movie, although I heard it was a box office bomb. So I, will, I am so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> but I do agree. Go see Mighty Python and the Holy Grail because that's the best movie ever. And while you're at it, find me a story! So, now it's time to our rest of the corner with Kathy Kelsey. Kathy? Today, we, in a recipe corner, we have chocolate chip cheesecake. I don't know if you saw the picture, but it's not very appetizing in black and white. Okay, for ingredients, for the crust, we have one cup of chocolate cookie crumbs, two tablespoons of salted butter softened. For the filling, we have 16 ounces of cream cheese softened, one cup of brown sugar, two cups of sour cream, three large eggs, one tablespoon of pure vanilla extract, one and a half cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips divided, which that means that. All right, preheat oven to 350 degrees. To prepare the crust, grind cookies into fine crumbs using a blender or a food processor fitted with a metal plate. Add butter and blend until smooth. Press crust into bottom of nine inch spring form pan and refrigerate while preparing the filling. To prepare the filling, we beat, the, we beat the cream cheese until smooth in a large bowl using an electric mixer. Blend in sugar and sour cream. Add the eggs and vanilla and mix until smooth. Using a wooden spoon, stir in one cup of chocolate chips. Pour filling into the crust lined pan. Smooth the top with a spatula. Sprinkle the remaining one half cup chocolate chips evenly over the top. Bake 30 to 40 minutes, turn oven off, and leave cheesecake in oven for one hour to set. Remove from oven and chill in refrigerator until firm, about three to four hours. It makes up to 12 to 16 servings. Now back to you. That's all from Recipe Corner. So, Mike, what kind of nose do you find at the zoo? I don't know, Mike, what kind of nose do you find at the zoo? Rhinos! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Mike Pelosi. And I'm Michael Nunzio. Thanks for joining us once again here at Renaissance Weekly. Remember, folks, life, life always, always offers, offers you a second, second chance. It's called tomorrow. It is too hard for this. Did you ever end up reading? The, the, the next few sentences is off script. I'm making up as I go along, so I apologize in advance if I mess up, because I don't know what I'm going to say. <coughs> He's getting cut. I'll, I'm putting it on the screen. Yeah. He's going to get cut, folks. <laughs> Naomi can't. No, nah. Naomi. For a week, for the past three weeks, I've messed up her name. Thanks, Kathy. What a great recipe. So, Mike, what kind of nose do you find at the zoo? I don't know, Mike. What kind of nose do you find at the zoo? <laughs> He's I'm laughing at the joke. Yeah, I didn't even know what it was, folks. So, um, a rhinos. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not do that. Uh, I didn't know someone else's birthday is uh, today. You're the last one. Yeah, hold on. Me neither. But speaking of Harvey Milk, and we're not doing that. Just read it anyway in case you can get it. Especially with the window open with AC. Yeah, we're dying of hardness. And we're singing a song about it. Kind of defeating the purpose.